In this video, we'll be setting up Lightspeed for your WordPress website. Let me show you what we'll be configuring in this tutorial. I'm going to walk you through every single menu item of Lightspeed. We're going to configure every bit of page caching. Looking at every single setting in Lightspeed, we are going to enable the memcache via hosting. Basically, we are going to discuss every single detail on all caching options. Let's dive in right now. Log into your WordPress website. If you're still logging in using WP Admin, no. Mm, nope. no. it's not a very safe way, so please watch my tutorial about WordPress security. On your dashboard, we go to Plugins, Add New. We're going to type in Lightspeed. Then we have this Lightspeed cache, over 4 million active installations. Let's press on Install Now over there. And then we're going to press Activate. Now you see up here, you see a new icon over there with all these settings. The first thing we do is we go on the left side, we go on here, Lightspeed Cache, and we click on Dashboard. Now this is your Lightspeed Dashboard, but there's not that much going on right now. Well, first, we're gonna set it up. I'm gonna walk you through all these settings over here one by one, so you can actually set up Lightspeed the right way. If we're gonna go to Presets, click on it. Here we can test out some presets already created by Lightspeed staff themselves, so you can actually test what works best for your website. Mm, if you follow this tutorial, we can do it step by step, so you don't need the presets. Just leave them on advanced. Then we go to the next tab. In here you can import and export settings. This could be very useful if you're deploying a lot of websites and all built on the same theme or the same way. Let's go over here to the general settings. Now we can actually configure and set up Lightspeed. The first thing of course is the automatically upgrade. If you do it yourself a lot of times, keep this on off. If you're not logging into your website that often, just turn it on. Now the first thing we need is a domain key. So press this button, request domain key. And now we just have to wait a bit. So after refresh, you will see that we have a domain key and it only took us 57 seconds. Let's scroll down a bit. If we want to use the CDN of quick.cloud, yes, we want to do that. Then we have to register with Quick Cloud. Let's do that. Click over there, link it. In here, we need to add in our email address and then we press sign in or up. Choose a strong password over here. Agree to the terms and press register. It's completely free. Then we have a validation email, which you should validate. And this email looks a bit like this, so we're just gonna press activate account. And then the activation has finished successfully. Go to your dashboard, enter your password, and press login. Then we have successfully linked our website to the quick.cloud. Then we start setting up our website. If we scroll down a bit, we can go to guest mode. Let's turn on the cache mode. It will actually benefit the people who for, for the first time visit your website. Guest optimization. Of course, use this on. And over here, we're gonna check my public IP. Click on it, copy this IP and paste it in over there. And then we're gonna press save changes. And now we see when we have pressed save changes that the guest mode testing result is past testing. Well done. Actually, your website should be a little bit faster right now. Let's go to tuning over there. And here you can actually exclude some testing tools from the guest mode. So you could, for example, if you don't want GT metrics on the guest mode, just delete it and then save it. But for now, it is excellent. Then we go over here to cache. Before we can actually do something here, there is a warning currently unavailable because we have to use the Quick Cloud CDN or a Lightspeed web server. Well, this website is using the Google Cloud, so it's not using a Lightspeed web server. How do we do that? Well, very easy. Let's go to CDN over there. And then we're gonna turn on the Quick Cloud CDN and press Save Changes. Well done. Now we go back to caching over there. And now the warning is gone and we can start tuning all these things. All these cache control things should be on, uh, except for cache mobile. But if you're using the guest mode and it's on, you should use caching for mobile. If you don't use it and you have a responsive theme like Divi or Elementor or Astra, they all have responsive themes, then you should keep this off if you're not using guest mode. But we are using guest mode, so I'm gonna keep this on. 
press save changes and we go to the next step which is called ttl or time to live now the default public cache has only one week to live after that it's being purged or when someone visits your website again after one week it has to re-download the files from your website in this case one week is excellent private caching 30 minutes great all these things are actually really great so let's keep them this way then we go to tab 3 purge we're gonna purge all on upgrade when you upgrade a theme or a plugin the ca entire cache will be cleaned and that's exactly the way it should be with any caching plugin these are all good if you update a front page home page pages all pages then the cache will be purged which is logical and should be done so this is really great then we have surf still just keep it like this then we have the scheduled purge urls you can add in some manual urls so that you can actually schedule when it will be purged from your cache most users don't use it so leave this empty but if you do need it here you can add a purge time over there with the current time then you can set the purge time over there we don't need that press save changes and then we go to excludes over there if you do not want to cache urls or images you can add them in over here and here and well categories query strings tags cookies everything can be done over there now when you're working a lot on your website changing paging adding new things it might be useful to make sure that when you are an administrator that there's no caching involved on your website then we go to esi over there if you have a website where a lot of people are logging into your site constantly changing things need the admin bar then the esi is very useful then you need to turn this on you can change a couple of things like the comment form and the admin bar just keep them all enabled if you're working with also authors and editors and subscribers you can actually change here the very groups in which group they will fall you just have a simple website just for your own don't bother just leave it on the way as it is let's go to object caching over here we're gonna turn this of course on because it's a very powerful feature to speed up your website if i want to use memcache i actually actually have to enable this within my hosting environment if I have done so but I have to change this to uh, this IP address on this specific hosting company and the port is the standard memcache port so make sure to check it out before you save changes now when I save changes you can see that the connection test has been passed that means my WordPress is now connected to the memcached server options within my hosting and that's actually pretty amazing because this will really speed up my website all these other things are actually pretty good so we're just gonna keep it on this and save changes then we go to browser over there browser caching of course should be turned on over there and we have a browser caching time to live for one entire year one day and six hours let's just change this to about one week four days 13 hours and 46 minutes press save changes then we go to advanced over there now the login cookie is actually used if you have more wordpress installations installed on the same domain name most users don't have this if you do read all this and add it in over there improve your http https um, this should be off no you should actually serve only content over the HTTPS SSL certificate so I don't know exactly why this is still here because it's just a bad practice to use both instant click turn this on and when your visitor hovers over your menu items this page will already be loaded in the backend so it will dramatically speed up the experience for your user however the downside of it is that it will actually create some more server load so if you notice that your server is cannot handle all the requests make sure to turn this off again then we press save changes well done now we go to a cdn over here we've already turned this on really great this url is great we need to include images css and javascript of course scroll down all these things are actually pretty great now, we don't have cloudflare but you can use cloudflare with lightspeed we're not gonna do that right now press save changes then we go to the quick cloud cdn setup with the quick cloud cdn setup you can actually reroute your entire traffic through quick 
dot cloud. This is very useful if your visitors come from around all the world and you need to use a CDN which deliver your content from the nearest server somewhere in the world. If you don't have a lot of users from all around the world, you can leave this empty. As for this website, I currently don't want this website to route through the CDN of Lightspeed Cache, but you can sure do so. If you do, you need to change your DNS settings. Remember, if you mess up your DNS settings, there will be a problem with your email and your entire website. So be careful when following these steps. If you want me to walk you through it, drop them down in the comments. I can always make another video about this topic. And on the last step, manage, there's really nothing to do over here. If you do have Cloudflare, you can turn it on and configure it over here, but we're not using it on this website. Let's go to image optimization right there. With Lightspeed, you can optimize your images from within quick.cloud. That works actually really great, but before you send your optimization request, we actually need to go to image optimization settings over there. Because now we can change them before we send them. The first one is the auto request. If you upload new images to your library, when you turn this on, it will be automatically optimized within quick.cloud. Very useful. Turn this on. Auto pull it. Turn it on. Optimize original, yes. But then you can choose to remove original backups. If you're uninstalling Lightspeed because of some kind of reason, you do want to have your original images or else you don't have them at all. So keep this on off. Optimize, lastly, you can keep this off unless you are a photographer displaying all your work. You need to turn this on because now the quality is just a little bit better, but the images are also a bit bigger. Most users can turn this off. If you don't care about copyright data, GPS, comments, keywords inside of your images, then turn this off and it will remove them from your images. It will save just a little bit of size on your images. The image WebP replacement should be turned to on because WebP is way faster and smaller than GPGs or PNGs or whatever. So make sure to turn this on. Scroll down and we can see that which WebP attributes will be replaced. Images, lazy loading, all these things. Really great, just keep this on. WebP for extra source set should be on. And with the last setting, you can control your image quality. If you're not happy or satisfied with the images right now on your website, just make this quality higher. So for something like 90 or 95. If you think, well, we can compress it any further, let's keep it to 80, 82, that's excellent. And press save changes. Then we go back. Then we go back to image optimization summary and we're going to press send optimization request right now. And now all our images will be sent out to quick.cloud. We can use the optimized WebP images. Really amazing. For now, we have only one group with 16 images. So that's actually really great. Now we go over here to page optimization right there. We have a couple of things we need to change. CSS Minify, of course, turn this on. CSS Combine, also turn it on. Generate UCSS, turn it on, really powerful feature. And the USS Inline, also turn this on. If you notice that on the front end that your website is not looking that great, you can turn this off again to see how this actually impacts your website. Go over there, then we're gonna need, we're gonna load CSS asynchronously, of course, and we're gonna use this per URL. And we can turn this on also, but make sure to check this when it's turned on if your website still produces the right CSS. We're gonna turn this on and then the font display optimization, of course, turn this on to swap and press save changes again. Then we go to JavaScript settings over there. We want to minify it, we want to combine it and we want to have it combined external and inline and we're gonna use it deferred. Press save changes. And before you can test this all out, you need to actually go over there and press purge all. On the JavaScript settings, we want all that. And then we go to HTML settings over there. Of course, you want to minify HTML content. Sure, you want to have prefetch control. You want to have prefetch control, of course. And we want to remove our query strings. Yes, load Google fonts. Remove the Google Fonts on the pagings that we don't use Google Fonts, yes. And remove the emojis because we're not using them at all. And remove the no script, yes. Press save changes. 
Then we go to media settings over there. We're going to lazy load all images. Very important. Then we have a basic image placeholder. Well, you could choose that. You could use that, but in most websites, this is not necessary. The responsive placeholder should be turned to on because what it does, it helps to reduce layout reshuffling. And that's where all the tools, especially Google with the layout shifting, becomes really annoyed if you have it. So turn this on, it will actually help. You can use the color value to change it to anything you have on your WordPress website for using for background. In my case, I would just go with white. Then we have the LGIP cloud generator. Then it will load a very bad quality image instead of your normal image, but it's still your image. So that's also a very good option instead of just colors. So just decide what you want. I'm gonna use the LQIP cloud generator. The quality of it should be around four or maybe higher if you want it. Then this is all good. You can lazy load iframes. If you're using iframes, turn this on. Most people don't use iframes anymore, so you can just keep it off. Add missing sizes, very important, and keep this on because it will save a lot of layout shifts and improves also your CLS. Press save changes. And then we go to a viewport images over here. You can turn this on. What this will actually do when you load in a page, everything above the fold, so the things you will first see, will not be lazy loaded. So in this way, it will load in instantly without using lazy loading. Everything below the fold will be loaded, will be loaded, loaded, <laughs> will be loaded lazy so that it improves your score and the user experience. I should turn this on. Works great. And also this option, viewport images cron, turn it on. Press save changes. Then we go to media excluders over there. Here you can add in the URLs of some of the images you want to exclude from a lazy loading. Mm, this might be useful in some cases like your logo. If you don't want your logo to get lazy loaded, you go to media over here, you go to library. And for example, I have the logo on my Tesla website. I'm gonna copy this URL to my clipboard. I go back in here and I'm gonna paste in my logo over there and then I press save changes. And now this image will not be lazy loaded on my website. But you can also do this trick with classes like CSS classes, you can edit in over there and iframes, also parent classes for iframes and URLs. Great, just normal users won't ever touch this, but now you know how it works. Then we go to localization over there. If you have a lot of people going to your website and they use gravitors, you can turn this on because now also images of the gravitors are being cached. Nice feature. Also it uses as a cron job and let's make them cached for one week. Great. Localized resources, if you're using uh, some things from Facebook or Google, they're all on our surface. You cannot have no influence over them. You can press on and then it will actually localize these external resources within Lightspeed. So that way it will all be served from your own website. This can be very useful when testing your website on GT Metrics and the Google page speed test. So press save changes. Then we go to tuning over there. Here you can exclude some JavaScript, uh, guest mode, URL excludes. If you exclude yourself from caching, that can be useful when creating pages and viewing them. If you do want to view your website as a guest, open up your website in a new private window and you will see your website as a guest with full speed. Let's go to the CSS tuning. Also in here, you can actually exclude all these URLs the same, um, but we're not going to exclude anything right now, so we're just going to leave it as it is. Then on the left side, you can go to database. Here you can optimize your database. Remember, this is very tricky because if you, for example, clean all your post revisions, there is actually no way back to go back into that page and restore a revision. So if you're going to use revisions, don't click on this button. Now, most websites have a lot of spam comments, trash comments, and also a lot of transients. All these transients, you can delete them without hesitation because they're just settings from other plugins that are no longer on your website. You can just press clean all if you want to do it. It will optimize your database and a clean database is a fast database. Let's go to database optimization settings over there. Here we can actually limit the revisions stored in your WordPress website. If you store this, for example, to five, then 
only five provisions will still be available. This can be really useful. You can also limit it with days, so just do whatever you want. I would say keep this on five and you should be good. And then we go over here to the crawler. The Lightspeed Cache Crawler is a very mm, interesting system. However, if you want to have your this crawler run on your website, you have to allow it changing a lot of things on your server. For most users, that is just way too much work. As you can just go over here and purge everything on your website, that will also work great. Uh, also with map, the block list, all these settings are actually about all the Lightspeed Cache crawler. As we're not going to install it on this website and I highly doubt why you want to install this on your site. Let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions of reasons why I should actually do this on my website. Because the documentation of Lightspeed, I'm not convinced. Then for the last thing we go to the toolbox over here. On the toolbox you can see the perching toolbox. For whatever reason if you want to perch it manually you can do it over here and actually you can also do it over there and perch it. It's actually the same. So I don't know why you should want to use this this way but it's possible. On the import export tab again if you want to export all your setting of Lightspeed because you're deploying a lot of websites on the same server and the same settings this is useful. Here you can see your HD access file which has been modified by a light speed and this is the way it works. Uh, great view it, change it, whatever you want. Let's go to heartbeat over there. Well this is actually important. We need to control the heartbeat because if you control your heartbeat you change it to 60 seconds. This will definitely impact your server resources in a positive way. Let's keep this, turn this to on, also the backend, turn it to on and the editor, especially the editor, turn it to on and let's change this to, for example, 30 seconds. Press save changes. Well done. Here is the report in here. You can send it to Lightspeed if you have any questions about your installation or your Lightspeed configuration and you contact them. On the debug settings, you can of course debug your website. It will show uh, it will log cookies, show you some reports. Really great, but for normal users, not interesting. Let's go to the log view. Again, the debug logs can be found over here. Then the beta test, you can try it if you want to have the GitHub version. You can add it in over there and it's just for developers. Most people don't use this. That's basically it. If we now go back to the dashboard, we can see that there is more things are changing. We have public page speed. So this is really great. Now go test the speed of your website, see if your website still works the same and then you can optimize, turn off some options, turn them back on, whatever you want. I did not do a speed test on this website because this video is actually only about setting it up. If you have any questions or you just want to say thank you Matt, drop them down in the comments. I'll always reply. Hit that like button if I helped you out and subscribe over there of course and check out this video which is also really nice and going blazingly fast. Blazingly fast.